the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. We all know that the devil is constantly fighting humanity. He uses traditional ways and many untraditional ways. He uses straightforward ways, but most of the time, hidden ways that we might not even notice. Those hidden ways normally just creep into us without noticing, while dangerously those ways change our mentality and the way of thinking. And they desensitize us to the extent that we wouldn't even notice that there is anything wrong if we fall into the sins that the devil is using against us. One of those hidden ways, it's something um, that has become very common nowadays. It's the attitude of entitlement. The attitude of entitlement. The culture around us is attempting to gradually shift our mindset to believe that we all have our rights, including the right to have what we want, the way we want it, and when we want it. This is called the attitude of entitlement. When I feel that I am entitled to have this or to this without giving any account on what I am having. It's an, it is an attitude that has led many people, unfortunately today, to live off government handouts welfare, undeserved disability, and so on, thinking that they are entitled for it. So they think that they are successfully were able to fool the system or use some loopholes to get the benefits that, in fact, they don't actually deserve. And if we talk to them, they justify the wrongdoing by assuming that it's our right. They say it's our right. Or they say everybody does it. Why not me? I'm not doing anything wrong. This attitude, unfortunately, also is leading many children and youth to ask their parents to buy them whatever they want whenever they want, even if they don't need it. They feel that they are entitled for it. They can have it, why not? And many others to think that they should have in their young age, maybe in their twenties, they should have everything that probably took their parents a lifetime to earn and accumulate. The attitude of entitlement poses a great threat to our children and their future as adults. Because once they become adults, people will not just hand over things to them the same way their parents did. This attitude is very dangerous. This attitude pushes away the attitude of gratitude, the attitude of entitlement pushes away from the hearts of people the attitude of gratitude, the attitude of thanksgiving, and the desire to work hard for what they have or what they want. And this is a big sin because people start to become even more and more selfish. They just think about how they can get things easy way how they can get away with things, how they can own things without working hard for it, how they can get privileges that they think it's their rights to get. The problem with this, with this attitude also is that it makes people don't want to give or to serve. They focus only on what they can take from others. And this is totally against Christianity. The Lord Jesus Christ himself said, the son of man did not come to be served, 
but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. God himself served us to give us life. So if we Christians say that it's all about me and what I get and what I take, that's totally against the principles of Christianity. Christianity is more about giving and serving. It's about the needs of others as opposed to my wants. And unfortunately, even within the church, we find that some people have developed the habit and the attitude of entitlement. Even they think that coming to church is one of their rights and not only coming to church, that to do whatever they want at church, to run the church the way they want and to customize the service as they want. Some people think this, think they own the church. But notice the house of God. David the prophet said in Psalm 5, but as for me, I will come into your house in the multitude of your mercy. So it's the multitude of God's mercy that, allow, that allows us to come to church. He continues, in fear of you. Of course, the house of God is indeed a fearful place. He says, in fear of you, I will worship toward your holy temple. Where is this attitude in comparison to the attitude of entitlement that people walk into a church thinking that they have all the right to come to church and to even take communion and they might even not like what they get at the church thinking that they've been violated in their rights. Serving at church is very important. When people come to church, they come with the spirit of servants. That's how it's supposed to be. Not masters, that the church should serve them. They should come with the attitude of servants. What is the need of the church? What's the need of other worshipers? And they put themselves at their service, at other people's service. Unfortunately, we see some people just demand service, demand that they be served, I mean. So they demand to be served as opposed to going to church with the attitude of gratitude and humbleness and service. Many people only focus on what they give, not what they would give to the church. Although God doesn't need what we give, but we go, we should go with the attitude of here I am, God. Let me serve your holy name through your church and through others. Even some, if the church doesn't give them what they want, you'll shop around. They will go to other churches seeking what they want. And they will keep hopping between churches till they find a church that would give them what they want. This is not the right attitude. Again, this is the attitude of entitlement versus the attitude of gratitude and thanksgiving. I remember one day, a mother complained to me saying, well, in Egypt, um, the Sunday school servant of my children used to come and pick up the children from home to take them to Sunday school. How come here servants Servants are people like you and me. They have their time schedule, they have their life, they have their own children. And here, we can't really provide you with uh, uh, the service that you are used to in Egypt, that servants would come to your place to pick up your children to bring them to church. How about you? What's, what's your responsibility in this? Where are you in the life or the spiritual life of your children? Isn't it your responsibility? But she feels that she's entitled for that. And the church is not doing a good job because now she has to drive her own children to church. So the church is not doing um, a good service here. Partaking in communion, we take it as rights. 
it's my right to take communion. And if someone um, did a big mistake or a big sin and his father of confession will tell him, I see that you shouldn't take communion for a week or two. He would be very angry. How come I'm forbidden from taking communion? How come? Abuna is not just, Abuna is not fair. The church is very strict. How come? As communion has become a right for him. Well, communion is a privilege. God gave us his own body and his own blood. We don't deserve that. But again, the attitude of entitlement, unfortunately, makes people even think that they deserve to take communion. When we come to take communion, we should come in fear. This is the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The holies are for the holy. I should be holy before I start to even think of partaking of the Holy Communion. Not only the spiritual stuff like coming to church and communion, even other things like um, sports, for example. We opened the church for uh, our children and youth to come to church and adults as well, to come to church to have clean fun through sports and activities and so on. To my surprise, I find that some people, whether children or even adults, think of sports at a church for them to come and play basketball or some sports in the gym of the church is to be the right. We have the right to come. And if we suspend any service for any reason, they become angry. How come the church is closing her doors in our face? Hmm. Well, the church is not a community center here. If the church allows part of its facility to be used for sports or activities, that's a privilege. That's something a church is going the second mile to help children to come to church in a, a protected environment and instead of going to community centers or play sports with um, uh, you know, unspiritual environment where they get exposed to violence or language or any other things that we don't want them to get exposed to. But the main goal for a church is not sports, is not to open a gym. This is something additional. But again, with the attitude of entitlements, they think that this is their right. And if this church is not going to open the gym, forget about this church. I will go to another church where I can play sports. Is this even right? Of course not. Well, <laughs> Sometimes we have, like in the old days when we had the church open in full capacity, we had limited parking, um, especially during feasts. So we give priorities. We give priorities to uh, seniors, older people, or people with young children to use the facility of the parking at uh, the church. People or others might get really, really upset. How come I'm not allowed to park at the parking lot of the church? Yes, because there are other people who deserve more than you to park at the parking lot of the church because they're, and it's minus 20 in the Christmas liturgy, or because there is no on the ground and we need to protect them, or because this family has little children, strollers, and they're very difficult for them. And we provided for you a satellite parking where you can actually go and park there. But they get very upset. Why? Because they feel that they are entitled for the right of parking at the parking lot of the church. Others can park anywhere else, but I am entitled to park at this parking lot. I'm just giving some examples to show you how the devil creeped into our spirits and made us do all these things which are sins, by all means. They have hidden sins like selfishness and greed and uh, many other th sins too, but we don't even feel that. Why? Because that's one of the ways the devil would um, have his war against spiritual people is by just creeping into their spirituality with things like the attitude of entitlement. A big, big problem, if a deacon who learned along him and came to church Ask the Buna to sing the long hymn that he just learned. Abuna noticed that the time doesn't allow 
for one reason or another, and he would tell him no. Well, this deacon would be really, really upset. He feels that he's entitled. He put the effort in learning the hymn. How come I'm not, for, I'm not allowed to, um, to sing it? Or how come my child is not allowed to serve in the altar? Feeling of entitlement. I'm entitled to serve in the altar. Do you really understand what serving in the altar is? Do you really understand that this is the temple of God and standing in the altar as we pray is as if we're standing in heaven? This is the holy land that we are there. But everybody is entitled to serve in the altar. And if you say no or put a schedule, people know, oh, how come this person went to the altar twice and I went to only once and they keep looking and arguing. Is this even possible? Is this even the spirit? Is the spirit of thanksgiving? humbleness, humility, it's a very dangerous attitude. At the household, sometimes, and I don't want to cause a problem here, but sometimes you feel like the children or the husbands have this attitude uh, and they attack one another because of that. For example, a husband or children will attack their, uh, uh, their mother or uh, uh, his wife, just because she didn't do the dishes, for example. Do you feel that they are entitled for this kind of service? When we come home, we should have dinner and we should have, after dinner, we should have our, the dishes uh, washed. Well, who said, who said, who, who gave this role? Question, a small question. Who gave the, you this entitlement? Like now, your wife goes to work exactly like you. Works maybe more longer hours than you when you go home nothing wrong of washing the dishes now we don't even wash dishes just put them in the dishwasher and take them out of the dishwasher what's the big deal why we don't do it in the spirit of love why we feel that we are entitled for this or we're entitled for this kind of service at home we need to watch out because it's a big sin it's selfishness it's greed there is no thanksgiving there. There's no appreciation there. It's a, a list of sins that they are, which are head, hidden uh, under the feeling of the entitlement attitude. The list can go on and on, but I don't want to say more than that. But I want everybody to just pray, search their hearts and their minds. And if they find that the spirit or attitude of entitlement is creeping into their mind or their hearts. Watch out. Let's all examine our hearts and our minds and our lives to make sure this big sin doesn't enter our lives. And if it is, we repent. We take it out, take it out from the roots, take it out from our hearts and live a spiritual life that's filled with thanksgiving, filled with the spirit of and the attitude of gratitude and helping one another. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.